Welcome back everyone to another Weather to Glance video. In today's video, we will be covering our second preliminary summer forecast for the summer season of 2021, all coming up in just a bit. All right, and on our first slide, we are taking a look at our summer precipitation outlook for the summer season of 2021. And as you can see, we do have the majority of the eastern United States in that above average green region that's slightly above average precipitation for areas of Maine and um, most of the eastern coast of the United States. Uh, and northeast is going to be experiencing some above average precipitation due to that jet stream pattern, but not as much as I was thinking before because of those colder temperatures. Um, locking down drier air um, as those Arctic intrusions do come in. Now, I'm not talking about 30 degree weather or anything of that sort, but we do seem to be having colder temperatures coming in, which brings drier air. So we're talking maybe um, 60s and 70s at time, uh, you know, and um, that will bring drier temperatures into the area. But at times you can expect slightly above average precipitation throughout these areas, especially down into um, just east of Albuquerque, New Mexico, and down through portions of Texas, and down even into Florida, which we were expecting that um, that high pressure area to stay down in Florida, but um, that relative high pressure area throughout the summer is starting to seem more southward due to, to near Miami, which is saying down there. And that's really going to keep things drier down near Miami. But as the jet stream really curves down through the Gulf of Mexico and moves up through Florida, we will see those possibly slightly above average precipitation patterns. Um, also bring a little bit of severe weather here and there um, if cold air presents itself in the upper levels of the atmosphere. But moving on to our next region, you can see our um, above average region, which is even including areas of Boston, New York City, um, and portions of Dallas, Texas, most of Texas actually, and even in the, down into New Orleans. Now, as I, I'm going to be updating this forecast every 30 days or so, so our next forecast will likely be our official summer forecast because we had a late start with these forecasts. And I bet, I guarantee that um, this well above average region will be brought down into areas of New Orleans just because of those um, really high precipitation amounts that are expected to go throughout um, portions of Louisiana due to that jet stream pattern. Pattern. And there's a lot of humidity down in New Orleans um, because of the Gulf of Mexico. So if those low pressure systems prevent, present themselves, um, we could have a lot of precipitation patterns coming through there. But our, our general um, above average precipitation area will be where the jet stream flows. So as you can see from Boston all the way down through Oklahoma and portions of Texas and throughout these portions of the southeast into Atlanta, Georgia. And as we move on to our next region, our final region on the um, precipitation outlook map, you can see that we do have our well above average precipitation outlook. And this is a widespread area um, in this jet stream pattern. As you can see in Tennessee, you've already had seen those really, really um, high general amounts of precipitation, even up to six or seven inches above average precipitation. Um, and we are expecting those conditions just south of New York City into portions of New Jersey and areas of Washington, D.C. So make sure if you live in Washington, D.C., you're looking out for that too. Um, nothing set in stone just yet, but it is looking to be a high precipitation summer for those of you down there, um, especially into areas of Virginia and um, generally through Arkansas too. So make sure you're all prepared for that. And West Virginia, you have been experiencing some um, high precipitation amounts too, especially southern tiers of West Virginia. So make sure um, you're prepared for that because um, those creeks and mountain water can flow down and cause flooding into the rivers. So make sure um, that you are ready for any possible flooding conditions downstream of the mountains. Um, that is always a possibility, but um, usually the soil is strong enough with roots and everything else to build up. So um, no well-saturated soil that you get flooding conditions such as that. But th that's generally my concern is with um, areas near Virginia and West Virginia because of the mountainous regions and how that water may flow down the mountains and affect those southern portions down here um, near Atlanta, Georgia, and all of those, um, mainly in the Mississippi area because of the Mississippi River and how that water flows down the Ohio River and down into the Mississippi River. So that always could be a big possibility for some flooding. Um, nothing really major, but definitely some above, well above average precipitation in the Tennessee portion. So flattened areas, um, you could experience some um, ex extensional flooding. So um, make sure you're prepared for that. 
All right, moving on to our severe weather outlook, you can see that um, not much has changed, actually. We did add a couple of additions more westward because those uh, those higher precipitation amounts are seeming to shift westward now that the La Nina pattern is fading. And you could see up in the Great Falls, Montana, you could see some portions of the severe weather. Um, this light pink region means your um, general severe weather pattern. Um, but yes, this is not a severe weather outlook pattern or a, a, a map for to tell you if you're going to have above average severe weather or not. This is generally a color code so that the eye can define where the most severe weather will be happening. So your pink is just your general outlook for your sev you know, slight severe thunderstorms down in Miami too because we're experiencing those dry, drier temperatures down in Miami um, throughout the summer months. And... Um, and up into Maine with those colder temperatures. So if you live in the pink region, you can expect a couple severe thunderstorms here and there, nothing much. Now, as we move into the July months, I could um, I could see extending this darker pink region into Montana just because of um, the cold air that presents itself in the upper levels of the atmosphere, and the hail will be a big risk due to those upper level cold atmosphere conditions, uh, as well as those um, low level warm air temperatures and humidity causing a plethora of severe thunderstorms. So always a very big um, dice roll here up in the northern portions of the United States in the summer months. Um, but as we move on to our um, darker pink region, this is where you see those general severe thunderstorms, um, possibly a tornado or two, um, definitely possible in Vermont and areas such as that throughout the um, the southeast into Florida. You can also expect those general severe thunderstorm risks and into areas of Rapid City and um, areas of possibly Dallas, Texas, or sorry, um, Central Texas, Wichita, Texas. So, of course, tornado season isn't over just yet. As you move into the summer months, there's always that risk, but definitely dying down. Um, as we focus in onto our um, northern areas, Rapid City, I could definitely see extending the red risk out to Rapid City just because of the general severe weather in the summer months. But with those colder temperatures this year, it might be um, a little bit less than it usually is. So maybe a below average severe weather season. Um, not sure yet. We'd have to wait until our official um, forecast for our, us to define that. But as we're moving on to our red risk, this is where things start to pick up. Um, you have a fairly good risk for severe weather and possibly, uh, you know, a couple scattered tornadoes here and there um, given shear conditions. And you can see that this is generally stretching from the north where we are experiencing those um, nasty severe weather conditions throughout the summer months. All of you are prepared for that. And you can see that just west of, just east of Rapid City into the Dakotas, this is where that really starts to pick up its severe weather pattern because of that jet stream and the cold air intrusions that really um, cause, the, the biggest threat is hail. And that's why the severe weather risk means so much because you have to be prepared for those hail conditions up north in those summer months. Um, areas of Oklahoma City are also included in that red risk there, possibly the dark red risk. And Dallas, Texas, you're also included in the slight red risk. Um, definitely a widespread area. We have it up in New York and the Boston area are also included in this red risk. This is um, your, your more um, increased severe weather patterns, of course. Um, up into Michigan, you guys definitely experiencing that. I would not hesitate to um, possibly lift this darker red risk up into Michigan, um, all changing probably in the final um, summer forecast, but we could definitely see some changes because of Michigan's Cape values and um, shear levels whenever the jet stream presents itself more, more northward. But um, Moving on to our darker red region, this is where things definitely start to pick up. This is our second to last region, and this is where you experience um, those those intense squall lines. Those intense squall lines are very common in these regions, and that's really what the summertime thunderstorms are all about. This does not mean any uh, severe thunderstorm pulse pulse thunderstorms throughout the summertime because pulse thunderstorms are very common in the summertime but in the summertime months but um, generally we're talking about squall lines so we have a cold front moving through the area off of our low pressure system and these can really become strong with that cold air so as that cold air moves um, down from the north this cold air can really be strong and it can be very um, very significant so we have our low pressure system in our cold front and um just in front of that cold front is our severe weather, um, our line of severe weather, a convective line. And some of these convective lines um, can form derecho type storms, and that can be very significant, bringing very um, damaging straight line winds. 
Um, so if you live in this darker red region, um, you can definitely expect squall lines. Those are very common in this area. Um, more significant squall lines of a, a scattered couple, I'd say maybe two or three are very common. And you can definitely expect those conditions throughout the summer months. Moving on to our final red region, which is the dark red region, um, including Fargo, North Carolina, o Omaha, Idaho, or Iowa, sorry, and St. Louis, Missouri. These are all areas that can be expecting some um, more significant severe weather, tornadoes, um, definitely a threat throughout the summertime, but mostly focusing on those derecho conditions. Um, definitely not, we're not talking about multiple derechos. There's a chance for a derecho or two that is very common in the summertime months because of um, those that bowing effect with the cold air. Very cold air can make um, severe th storms very strong with those outflow winds. So make sure you're staying in tune for that. Um, Basically, your major threat here is hail and damaging winds throughout the summer months. Um, not really tornadoes because the shear starts to calm down, but definitely a threat for tornadoes in the summer months in these regions. So make sure you're prepared for that. Um, but mainly your threat to this summer is damaging winds. Um, we could be talking 60 to 70 mile per hour wind gusts with some of these squall lines, maybe mainly staying in the 40 to 50 mile per hour range. But um, if you live in the Iowa region, you remember that Cedar Rapids duration last year. I wouldn't be anticipating anything that severe this year, but I'm never rolling it out because there's always that possibility with those very cold temperatures as those low pressure systems move more southward through this area with that jet stream pattern. All depends on what the jet stream is doing. So now we're moving on to our final slide, which is our temperature outlook. And as you can see, we're not anticipating anything too major, any too major changes here. Um, we're just mainly focusing in on a slightly above average region down south because of drier conditions. Now, of course, in Louisiana, the as the in the beginning of the summer months, you will be seeing those um, above average to all above average conditions down in Louisiana. But mainly as the summer month um, moves on, it will start to get drier down south. So um, we won't be anticipating anything um, further severe or highly precipitable. But of course, very we are anticipating some slightly above average temperature patterns, so make sure you um, are prepared for any possible um, higher temperatures than usual. Definitely nothing more significant because when you're talking about slightly above average, that's nothing to look out for. That's mainly um, just slightly above average, maybe a couple degrees above average here and there, but um, you could see those warmer temperatures, possibly even drier temperature or drier conditions, sorry, as we move on through those months. And um, we're talking about a slightly below average region up into the northwestern portions of the United States, Washington, Oregon, um, Idaho, and um, western Montana as well. So nothing too major, um, maybe mainly staying in the 60s and 70s this year, um, more so than usual, maybe your 70s or 80s, uh, because of that how far low the jet stream is. So that's why we're seeing this cold air intrusion into the northern parts of the United States because of how our jet stream is interacting this year. Um, it's it's sweeping more southward this year. And that's why you see those um, colder air temperatures locking more southward. So mainly we're right now, the north, the northern um, United States is locked in a colder pattern and most likely will be as the La Nina continues. It is starting to fade, as I said before, but um, these colder temperatures will be present and persistent throughout the um, summer months. So mainly through June, July, possibly even August as well. So don't anticipate any um, extremely warm temperatures this year, maybe a couple 90 degree days here and there, but definitely up in this region of the slightly below average temperatures, mainly staying in the um, 60s and 70s, possibly some 80 degree days here here and there, you know, just mainly colder temperatures. Um, and of course, for those mountainous regions, that's not um, covering those regions, those colder regions, you obviously know how your mountainous weather affects. But um, so yes, as you can see, our pattern is kind of a calmer pattern this summer. Last summer, we had a very extreme drought up in the United, up in the northern United States, and very high precipitation down south with lots of flooding. So um, definitely a strong pattern last summer. But this summer, um, I'm glad to tell you that nothing extreme this summer does doesn't look to be too extreme. We're definitely starting to calm down with that severe weather pattern. So make sure that you're not um, stressed out this summer. Um, a nice, I'm happy to tell you that it's going to be most likely a very nice calm summer for those of you. And um, that's basically what you can anticipate this summer. So a nice happy little summer after a very rough year. 
All right, I want to thank you all for watching today's video. Um, big thanks to today's sources. Now, Pivotal Weather was not shown in today's forecast, but they were used to make the forecast maps that I demonstrated in this video. Um, I would ask you to consider subscribing for more U.S. forecasts free of charge, and consider following the Weather to Glance Facebook page for more inside information and complimentary forecasts when you message me on my Facebook page. Um, thank you all again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.